Welcome to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast, dedicated to exploring the interesting journeys of the people in the provincial construction industry. Presented by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association, produced by Gale Force Winds. Join us as we chat with the inspirational individuals that ensure the continued growth of the construction industry and the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. And welcome to the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association podcast. And I'm Alan Dale. With me, as always, my good buddy, Jerry Carew. So excited to be in conversation with the people that are in and around this industry. Stanley, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, folks. Good to be here. My yeah. name is Stanley Oliver, and I'm the manager of the Indigenous Affairs Office for Trades and L. And, of course, we're down for the Office to Advance Women uh, session and also the Newfoundland Labrador Construction Association, AGM. Happy to be here. So tell me about your journey to this job, uh, Stanley. I guess I'm an older government bureaucrat. Right. No, I spent uh, 20 years with the province, then uh, 10 or 12 years in the Indigenous government side. Okay. Mainly as a negotiator on natural resources, fisheries, forestry, that kind of stuff. And then uh, I was working for Nukutukovut out of Labrador in their fisheries. And this opportunity arose with Trades and L to run their Indigenous Affairs office. Right. So uh, somebody mentioned it to me, I applied, and here I am. So Trades and L is part of the NLCA? Trades and L is a member of the Newfoundland Labrador Construction Association. Right. And uh, we get all their webinars, their training, we get their newsletter, we participate where we can. Uh, there's sectors that are have uh, chairs of committees and they have a Labrador sector so uh, I talk to the gentleman quite often and uh, we talk about things that are happening in Labrador on the construction side. Right now tell me this uh, what value do you think that NLCA brings to you? Well I think Newfoundland Labrador Construction Association brings a lot of value number one even something as simplistic as getting their newsletter every Friday from their staff. It keeps us in contact what's going on in the construction industry in the province. You know, cliche, keeps your finger on the pulse. Right. And it keeps your, we're gonna be. That's fine, keep going, we got good mics. We got good okay. mics, yeah. It keeps your finger on the pulse in what's going on in tenders being let, right. tenders being awarded. Yeah. And also it keeps you in contact with other industry players about sessions like this, like the AGM, the Office to Advance Women, the Women in Resource Development, uh, the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Safety Association, right. you know, like-minded groups that are kind of doing the same thing we are doing. We have mutual interests. Right. And number two, they have a lot of training webinars that myself and other staff like to participate in. And we find it very helpful when you're trying to assist clients in either finding a job, providing wraparound services to a client, or just making connection to a company that just won a tender. Stanley, there's a, a lot of opportunity right now in Newfoundland and Labrador. It appears every time you listen to the radio, you read the news or watch the news, there's new things happening here. Tell me about that from your point of view. Well, I guess my focus more is from a, an Indigenous perspective. That's my role is to right. advance Indigenous apprentices, number one, to get jobs. but we're also trades and L. Right. So we keep an eye on what's going on in the potential jobs, what's the labor forecast. So whether it's Marathon Gold with their Valentine Gold Mine that's happening in, in central Newfoundland, or whether it's, you know, the pending Gull Island discussions and the project, mm -hmm. or whether that's an expansion to Valet underground in Boise's, or expansion of Tecora and IOC. And then that's not even talking about the construction, like building a hospital in Cornerbrook. Right. You know, building of an uh, expansion to the long-term health care in Happy Valley Goose Bay. Building or pending construction of the mental wellness center here in St. John's, and these sort of things. So there's lots of things happening that we're very interested about construction in general, but also how do we advance indigenous people in the construction industry. Right, right. And are how, you... Let me jump in. So where are we right now? Is, is there uh, it's still an enormous amount of work to do. Is it coming along? Where would you just summarize it a little bit? Some days I feel there's a tremendous amount of work to do, and it seems like, you know, one step forward, two step backwards. Yeah. But I will say, you know, we've made 
tremendous amount of progress in the last couple of years. You know, we're working very closely with, with the 16 unions of trades in L. We were, work very closely with the Canadian Builder Trades Union. So we are making progress, albeit some people might find it slow. Yeah. But I feel, and maybe because I'm a bit biased because I'm there in the office, you know, we currently have like 450 clients. Two years ago, we didn't. Right. Wow. wow. 450. Right. And, you know, about 25% of those clients, gentlemen, are working. I was thinking 100 maybe. That's no, great no, to hear. 150. And we work very closely with other like-minded groups that are in the Atlantic. Like there's a group called FIT, which stands for First in Industry Trades. And they do exactly what we do, only in New Brunswick. I see. The Apprentice Nova Scotia has a couple of staff that do exactly like we do. Uh, BC Trades and Al Alberta, or Alberta tr Trades. They have a counterpart like Stanley Oliver on behalf of BC Trades who do what we do. So we work with all these groups as, as a, how, Jerry, do you move the ball ahead to lessen the barriers yeah. so indigenous people can participate if they want in the construction trades. And if they participate, how do we move from apprentice one to full journey person? Yeah. Wow. So the challenges that we had on breaking down some of those barriers are the same challenges that other underrepresented groups have, like women, like uh, uh, new Canadians coming into the country. So we work so closely, I have and do and will work with their 16 trades people and unions. And it's the only way we can do it is, is yeah. like, you know, we all say again, cliche, we got to do a better job. Let's not dwell on the past. Let's right. do a better job. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, I may feel like, or I am sometimes the only indigenous person in the room at the table. So how do I respectfully in insert myself into a conversation? So, you know, to broaden people's perspective, perspective, how do we take those 450 people and give them jobs? Yeah. Wow. It sounds like quite a task, uh, but it sounds like you're in the conversation and you've got great partners across the country and you're involved in great memberships like this. Absolutely. Right? And this is how you advance it. And Absolutely. When I see things like the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association having an entire day focused on women and dealing with that problem, they're serious about making underrepresented groups understand the complexities of the, their industry for that group and breaking down the barriers. Yeah. Fantastic to see. Oh, it's about moving the ball forward. As I just said, you know, the challenge we face as underrepresented groups, the three groups I mentioned, you know, women, indigenous people, uh, new Canadians, people with disabilities, you know, how do we work together to advance, just one step at a time. We call it providing wraparound services on an individual pace. It's not always the hundreds of jobs, it's one job at a time. Job at a it's time. one family at a time, one person at a time, and then from a community perspective, when you start helping one person at a time, you're helping the community. And you folks know this, people feel more healthy when they're working. Yeah, 100%. They're mentally more better, they're obviously economically more better, and so it just makes people feel better when they're working. Stanley, I love your approach, one person at a time. Jerry and I had the privilege a year or so ago to be on a Canadian destroyer sailing from a place to a place, and uh, we met one of the cooks and the cook said that he was serving his country one bowl of soup at a time. Perfect. I right? love the analogy. Isn't, Isn't it great? great? Isn't it great? It's yeah. great. Yeah, and, and that's what we do. Like, uh, you know, yeah, we have targets that are set by the government, but the government is our good partner, the feds and the province here through the uh, Population Immigration Department. And, you know, we have great partners there, great staff there, and they, they're starting to realize and get it and work with us one job at a time. Then we'll be successful. Yeah. Will we lose a few on the way? Unfortunately, yes. You know, will there be suicides? Unfortunately, yes. But just trying to understand that and provide the necessary services to those individuals. Maybe it's a young mom who happens to be indigenous, needs some help with supportive housing right. or childcare. So how do we work together to provide that individual with those supports so that individual can go to work? And that's what you talk about, wraparound solutions, right? Exactly, wraparound solutions, wraparound support. 
Right. You know, client-based, individual-based, providing that little bit of, and some of them might be only a little bit of support, could be something as simple as, well, I got an eight-page resume. You know what happens to eight-page resumes? Yeah, I do. Flicked out. <laughs> you know what happens to a one-page resume? It's red. Consideration. Yeah, so it could it. be something as simple as, let's take your resume and highlight your specific skills so you will get the job. Jerry? Yeah. You know, That's what we'll do. Someone said to me one time, Ronald Reagan used to get a summary of the entire world's events every morning on one page. Oh, I believe, if you yeah, can't make yeah. a resume into one page, then yeah. you got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> and that's in due respect because well, you know, young people, they, they think they got to tell everybody about their whole right. yeah. career, yeah. even though it could be only two years. Yeah. But if you get our age, yeah. you put all your career on the table, and you, you got a 24 page resume. <laughs> No, you'd have about 30, yeah, I'd say. People from, don't want from, that. As I get to know you, yours would be about 30 pages. Pe people don't want that. <laughs> no. They want to know, tell me, Alan, what, what's the best project yeah. you ever done? Right. Yeah, right, exactly. You were in the military or the uh, Navy, correct? I was in the Navy, yeah. Right, so yeah. you were in the Navy 20 years. Perfect. What else did you do? Yeah. <laughs> right? Stanley, I had 20 years going to Stern. <laughs> I got 30 years in the Navy. Perfect, yeah. And like I said, thank you for your <laughs> were service. Were you an anchor? You were an anchor, weren't you? Stanley, but it's been an absolute Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. We're glad to be here. We're glad to be making strides. Yeah. Again, albeit slow, but I'd rather move forward slowly than move backwards quickly. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's wonderful to listen to you talk. Our role here is to make sure your words get out onto the yeah. internet. And I'm so, right? sh I'm so shy, right? Well... <laughs> I kind of now, just so everyone knows, I was on a getting on a plane in Montreal, standing there. This gentleman was standing next to me. Of course, we had a big conversation this yeah. about six months ago. Yeah. And uh, here we are. You're finally on. Well, I said to him, I said, well, so what do you do? Yeah. And he told me, and I said, oh, here's my card, and we exchanged cards, and we kind of thought, how can Stanley Oliver get on your podcast? Yeah. Well, here you are. And here we are. So I thank you for the opportunity. You know, Trades in Hell thanks you for the opportunity. And if you're ever in Labrador, you know, like they say, you know, look us up and we'll hook you up. Not right. if, but when. Right. Oh, that's better. Not if, when. That's and right. And you come to our office and we'll do the best to help you out. Well, another great conversation on the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association podcast. Stanley, I want to thank you very much for everything that you do, helping one person at a time, my friend. And thank you, gentlemen, for listening. Thank you for tuning in to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast, presented by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association, produced by Gale Force Winds.